Welcome to the Freaky Film Club, episode four All right. of this year. It's um, a little bit more intimate because it's just a two-person format today. It's um, my good pal Justin tonight. Yeah, how are you doing? I'm doing really well. I'm good. How about you, buddy? Oh, I got no complaints. Ready to dive into another freaky film clip here. All right, man. And tonight we're looking at, um, well, since it's episode four, we're looking at part four of Nightmare on Elm Street. Dream, Dream Master? That's right. The Dream Master. And much like I'm feeling around this time, I feel the franchise is feeling this, um, and that is fatigue. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we had a, you know, we came off the heels of a really, really good one, Dream Warriors. Mm -hmm. And this one has its issues. Yeah. Yeah. Not, not, not so much here. Right. Like, was Dream Warriors probably one of the most popular ones, do you think, of the franchise? I probably one of the best ones. I think so. Like, as far as, like, where it's regarded, I believe people tend to put that one highest on their lists. Yeah, usually, like, one, mm -hmm. three. And then I don't know where you go from there. And then two and four are usually towards the bottom. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. A little disjointed. Yeah. Um, and uh, so we'll... Number four is directed by um, Rennie Harlan, who uh, is a foreign guy who really didn't have much of a resume going into this, but would actually go on to direct some pretty big movies. Um, he did Deep Blue Sea, uh, The Long Kiss Goodnight, Die Hard 2, I think he directed. Hmm. So, I mean, he did some pretty big movies. The funny thing about this movie, though, is first of all, it went through tons of different writers. Uh, a lot of people tried to try their hand at pol polishing it up and adding new things and stuff. Um, but they turned down a concept from Re Wes Craven originally, and his idea was to do a time travel story. So it was going to be like he'd travel through time through the dreams, which admittedly I think kind of does sound a little weird. Yeah, probably, but I mean, it is Wes Craven, so he probably could have done something cool with it. Yeah, probably would have worked out pretty good, or um, it definitely would have been unique and not as whatever this you want to call. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. steaming pile. <laughs> it, it seems like with all the different writers, maybe they just hired them all and they had them all write their own script, mm -hmm. and then they just mashed them together. It kind of does it, seem like that. It yeah, feels so like weird, like bits and pieces here and pieces there. And, mm -hmm. The whole it, thing doesn't make sense. No, it doesn't. It, and it's funny that they say that Craven's idea was too convoluted, and yet here we are with like this mess. Like you said, they patched together all these ideas, and it's like, okay, and this isn't. But. Yeah, they took like at the edits from everyone's favorite like part. Mm -hmm. Like, oh, let's just work that into the new script. And it's right. Like, eventually, you got to realize that there's too much going on here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And um. The whole thing, really, right from the start, too. I mean, after they got everything written out, um, they actually started shooting the movie before they even had a director. And they were going to get the guy who did Friday the 13th, Part 6. He had just come off of that, and, you know, he was becoming a bigger name. And he was really a, a big fan of the Freddy franchise. But once he found out they were actually still... They already started filming. He's like, what the fuck? I'm like, no, I'm not doing this. Yeah, how, how? How do you do this? <laughs> Wasn't there another one in the franchise, too, that they had started uh, doing that before the script was even finished? Was that yeah, this one? I or think, was that another one? I think there was another one like that. Yeah, yeah. They were just trying to roll them out so fast that they didn't have all their material. Which is funny. It's like I feel like it's an ongoing thing with a lot of the old eighties horror. Like, because I believe I remember reading a story about uh, Hellraiser that did the same thing. Where like later in the franchise, they're like, "We just need to pump these out." Yeah, we have no ending, but we'll 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 figure that out when we get there. Yeah, it's not a big deal. Yeah, that's minor minor details. We don't know how to end this movie. Yeah, that's for like our future selves to worry about. Yeah. <laughs> 
Um, so yeah, it was kind of a mess to begin with, which, you know, kind of shows, um, and they couldn't even get, um, Pat- Patricia Arquette. Is that who it was? Yeah. Yeah. She's... Couldn't get her to come back as, as Kristen, Kirsten. Kirsten. Yeah. I noticed that too when I was watching it and I was like, they, everything's the same, but the actress. Yeah. Which is unfortunate. Cause yeah, it's, it's very, it's, it's jarring. Not to say Tuesday Night is actually this actress's name, which is kind of funny. Yeah, I read that. I was like, interesting. Yeah, like, real name you think? I don't. It's got to be a stage name, yeah. right? Yeah. I mean, it's Hollywood. Who yeah, knows? That's true. They could think it's funny to name their kid that. I mean, some celebrities name their kids some pretty weird things, but right, like Apple, yeah, Pilot. <laughs> yeah, still my favorite. <laughs> yeah. So you never know, but um, it. It's not like she's bad, but it is jarring. Um, and it also happens to be that Tuesday Night did the main opening theme for this film, which is actually I love it. I think running, for, I think it's called Running from This. It might just be called Nightmare, but the chorus is like Running from This Nightmare. Oh. And uh, I love it. It like actually makes me. It feels like it's weird. Like I get a nost- nostalgic feeling as if I was around when this was out but i'm not obviously because i wasn't old enough to have been around then but right. um, when was this one released i think it was 88 but i'm gonna take a look just to clarify that it is 88 hmm. so yeah I, I was around but i would not remember you were born in 87 87 so yeah makes you, sense that you wouldn't remember yeah, that at least that was out for this one <laughs> yeah so this is the very first uh nightmare that you were you can say it you yeah were. On the planet for um, tough start, but yeah, you know. <laughs> can only go uphill from here. <laughs> yeah. Um, so yeah, we open the the film with that. I think is a great song by Tuesday Night, which is weird. You know, like what are the odds that not only is she replacing one of the leads from the previous film, but she's also going to do the theme song? <laughs> I wonder if that was uh, part of the deal. That's a good question. Yeah, you'd think it had to be of like some sort of uh, within the discussions as part of it. Yeah, you'd think so. Be like, oh, you know, I also have this, or I can do this. Mm-hmm. Try to work that in there. Let me promote my music as well as be the lead in this movie. Right. Yeah. But um, you know, it's uh, I think it worked out. I don't know if it worked out well for her. I mean, I think she still does music. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I don't see her in a lot of things. No. <laughs> um, but yeah, so it opens up kind of with your basic credits. And then um, like the other films in the franchise, we get a dream sequence with Tuesday Night. Right? Or is it Alice? I think it's Hello. Tuesday, isn't it? It is. Yeah, Tuesday. it's Tuesday. So she's playing. Because uh, she brings Alice into the stuff later on. That's right. Yes. <laughs> Um, so this is, yeah, it's uh, one year after Dream Warriors, and um, yeah, it's, it's an opening nightmare secret sequence with with uh, Kirsten, and we find out Joey. that also Joey and Kincaid are back. They join her throughout this sequence, and they're kind of just like, um, this is where she's in the boiler room and it's empty and she feels that freddy is back but joey and kincaid are kind of like what yeah like, no we we killed him right and um so that really nothing really happens too much with that except a dog leaps out of one of the like the what is it boiler or something yeah and bites her is that kincaid's dog yeah mm-hmm. It has to be annoying, though. You're just minding your own business, and you just get pulled into someone else's dream. Right, yeah. Hey, come on. I mean, how how often do you think it's happened over the course of this year? Like, you get pulled into a dream? A weekly basis, or? For them? Yeah. Oh, I... Like, do you think that, like, think, Kirsten's always doing this to I them? I think maybe at the beginning yeah. she did, until she learned to maybe control it a little better. I mean, I would hope. Yeah, I hope so, too. It'd be awkward if one of them is having a... One of those dreams, and all of a sudden, just nope, they're yanked into this one. <laughs> they go, oh, Come on, are you serious <laughs> again? <laughs> right after the dog bite, we go into the next day at school and we get more character dreams? intros. Um, we're introduced to this is going to be difficult because I didn't write everybody down, but there's like the the girl who's obsessed with fitness and soap operas, which is kind of shoe. Like, did soap operas have anything to do with anything? 
I mean, there's <laughs> day, daytime TV, I guess. Just uh, just as a way of giving her more of a personality. Yeah, other than just being someone who's into fitness. Okay, because they they didn't like reference any soaps or anything when Freddie killed her, did they? Like, no, there was no. nothing in like his. No, not that I could think of in like her death sequence or any of this tormenting. No, I don't remember no. anything with soap operas because they even mentioned one. Is it Dynasty? They mentioned a couple yeah, times. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, I don't think they mentioned anything with that. Okay. And if they did, we missed it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so I think her name is actually Debbie. I don't remember. Uh, and then we've got uh, the nerdy girl um, who's very... Nerdy. Nerdy. <laughs> <laughs> and in the... In the um... Yeah, for just watching it, I can't remember any other names. Yeah. And I guess I could look it up, but, uh, you know, it kind of derails things here. Yeah. But I'm going to do it, actually. <laughs> All right. Anyways, because I'm actually not that far off from this page. Her name is Sheila. The nerdy girl is Sheila. Mm-hmm. Okay. The fitness girl? Fitness girl is Debbie. All right. So. Um, and then Sheila pulls up on a moped to school. Right. Right. Um, and you find out she has asthma. And. Now, if you had asthma, would you want to keep riding that same thing every day? Well, that every time you get there, you got to take your inhaler because you can't breathe. Right. And someone does bring that up to her. And then she says it's genetic, but you'd think that it would still affect her. Yeah. Right? Yeah. That is weird. But, um, it's the 80s. It's the 80s. <laughs> it's a good answer. When, when in doubt, it's the 80s. It's the 80s. I do feel like we have used that a few times for some of the other questions we've had in, in other movies. Yeah. It's the 80s. It's the 80s. <laughs> um. Yeah, so you get an introduction to a lot of these characters. You get to also meet um, Alice and her brother, and Alice's brother's name is Rick. I was thinking Ricky, so it's probably pretty close to that. Okay, and he's um, he is kind of like obsessed with f- uh, martial arts and um, fighting, and you know yeah. he's, he's he's a good brother. He's he's like they, they have a nice dynamic. I yeah. think it's a really tries cool... tries teaching him some of that self defense and discipline and mm-hmm. stuff like that in the beginning of the movie. Right. Yeah, and uh, kind of wants to get her to stand up to their father because he's surprise, surprise, another alcoholic on Elm Street. Yeah, like another parent that can't cope with the past. There's definitely a recurring theme Taking here. Taking pain, painkillers and alcohol. Yep. So they uh, have a rough family life, and um, yeah, so it's a cool dynamic between them. I really like, I really like both those characters. Yeah. Um, and then so uh, later at school, we also I think we are introduced to Dan, the football player, jock guy. Yeah, because that's mentioned early, like with the whole when they arrive at school. Because okay. Rick says he'll introduce them. Right. That's right. Okay. And Alice definitely has a bit of a thing. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So after uh, that, all those introductions and some of the development there, we have another dream sequence later that evening. And this is where it really kind of starts going off the rails. Because, I mean, up until this point, it's kind of your basic Elm Street movie setup. You've got dysfunctionalish family, a nightmare to open the movie, and some teens that we're getting to know. So it's pretty normal yeah. so far. But now it's going to get flipped up on its head, and we're about to go, like, what the fuck's going on? This They're back in the junkyard. And it's the same junkyard in which Freddy's bones were buried and whatever, destroyed. Um, and... Um, Kincaid's dog. <laughs> yeah, this is when he uh, starts sniffing out the bones. And then he kind of like digs them up almost. Yeah. And this and is when the dog pees fire. He pees fire. He pees the hellfire on the Freddy bones. Which is like... What? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, wh- why? 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 Wh- wh- why did he pee fire? Yeah, how, how is that what brings him back? Yeah, how, how did they get to that part? Like, if the dog's just like, dog sniffs him out and pees fire. <laughs> like, I'd like a little more backstory here. And somehow... Is this a problem you have with a dog on a regular basis? Mm-hmm. Just the first fiery 
this like <laughs> and like this is okay but craven's script idea no we don't right. like that time so, travel no dog piece fire mm-hmm. let's roll with it right and there's actually a pretty funny quote regarding the dog pee and um this also i think comes from that documentary and um, it's this last paragraph here. Yeah. According to Never Sleep Again documentary, Ray, uh, producer Rachel Talalay recounted a meeting between director Rennie Harlan and James Cameron. Cameron inquired how Freddy was being resurrected for this film, to which Harlan replied, a dog pisses fire. I mean, so it yeah. sounds like that's about, if that's about as much information they're going to give up, like... Right. No one knows. And it's just like we couldn't really come up with anything better. So. Rushing to get the movie done. Like, how do we bring him back? Oh, d- d- dog. Dog. Peace, fire. <laughs> I, 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 anyone else got anything better? No? No? Uh, okay. Well, I'll have roll with it. <laughs> I mean, how would you do it? I don't know. There's. I mean, I. I, 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 I'd have to use some time brainstorming. I I'd think. I'd probably come up with something better than dog, peace, fire. Yeah, I would need maybe a night or two, but yeah, we could probably come up with something else. I mean, even if you just had, I would be more okay with the bones just coming together on their own for no reason than a dog setting the events to get like in motion. Yeah. It's stupid. It's maybe like, like another serial killer or something, maybe getting like gunned down or killed by another person like in there, uh-huh. in like the same area, maybe like the blood of him seeks into the ground, which gives Freddy back. Yeah, yeah, something. that would have been something, yeah. Or, um, yeah, I mean, I, I like that. Anything, anything other than a dog urinating fire. It's fucking, it's stupid. <laughs> so this is where immediately the movie starts to go off yep. the rails. Then you go, it's going to be one of those kind of movies. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Although I will say the effects when Freddy was getting put back together were actually pretty cool. Like when they showed it, like skin, like we yeah. assembling back on. Like yeah. they reverse filmed something melting. That was cool. Yeah. Um, so then uh, that's the end of Kincaid. Yeah. yeah. He tries to escape and what? All the, with the way they moved all the cars too as he was running, it was pretty cool. Yeah. And then he ends up just getting stabbed in the guts. Yeah. Pretty, uh, uneventful yeah. in terms of all the stuff that was kind of around him that could have killed him. Right. Could have done anything. A giant car mech and no. They they used the budget on that scene on dog peeing fire. Right. <laughs> yeah. Um so then after that um it pretty quickly actually after that is another sequence in which Joey is killed. Yes. He is sleeping on a waterbed, which is also probably very eighties. Did uh, do you know anyone that ever had a waterbed? My parents had a waterbed. Did they? Up. Yeah. <laughs> that had to have been. I can't even imagine having a waterbed. Like uh, I would be so. I feel like motion sickness would kick in. Yeah. Yeah, and I'd you, be afraid of breaking it. <laughs> you roll just wrong or something, and you get a little. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Just trying to think of any. Yeah, I know a couple other people that had waterbeds too growing up. What a weird thing. I mean. Do they still make them? I don't know. I was going to say, I'm kind of glad they don't do that anymore. Yeah. I'm sh- Yeah. It's kind of a weird idea. So, yeah, he sees, he's got like a thing for boobs. Boobs. <laughs> Which I get it. Yeah. <laughs> a lot of people have that aff- aff- affliction. Yeah. Um, it's ingrained in us at childbirth. <laughs> yeah. And uh, so he wants to get closer to the girl who is underneath the waterbed. This is a cool effect, actually. Yeah, she comes out, what, from the poster? He's, it's a poster he yeah. has, and he sees her in the bed. Right. So she's, like, underneath, like, come on, Joey. Yeah, I can't get out. <laughs> I'm stuck. <laughs> and then he goes, well, the whole thing basically turns into, like, one giant pool of water then, and Freddy is, becomes the female and yeah. <laughs> delivers the great line. Uh, how's this for a wet dream? <laughs> he he enjoys being a lady, I've noticed. Yeah. Yeah. It is a little bizarre. At least he doesn't... He's never really taken it too far, has he? Like, when he was the nurse, that didn't... How far did that go? I didn't think it went that far. Okay. Again, just being topless. Mm-hmm. Messing with Joey. Yeah, just, just messing with Joey. 
I there is a reoccurring theme though with um some older horror movies of like where that happens like with the main villain becoming another sex. Um, have you seen Phantasm? I don't think so. So there's a the guy in the in Phantasm is the tall man, and uh, he also does he does that trick too. He he pretends to be a woman in a cemetery at the beginning of the film, and he fucks some guy. <laughs> Oh, so that he really takes it far. Yeah, and um, a so, little too far. There. Yeah, and then at the end, like right when he's about the dude's about to climax, he reveals that he's the tall man, wow. <laughs> and he kills him. <laughs> so he's like, he's really into that character. Yeah, which is that says a lot of things about like, the tall yeah, man. Before, not after. What's that? He, you said he kills him before. He kills him right before. Yeah, oh, I could. That's I rude. I know. It doesn't even let the poor guy get off. Yeah. It's horrible. Or maybe it could be during, which would be all right, I guess. But it's hard to tell. You know, they don't really go, they don't make it super clear. It was based right. on my own assumptions. Got it. <laughs> I just like, I had to rewind it a couple times and I'm like, is this guy climaxing? I don't know. <laughs> right, right. This is right. going to make it into the freaky film club, right? <laughs> <laughs> That's the editor. I've had a lot of sexual discussions on my mind today, I guess. Apparently. <laughs> I don't know. I just wanted to really derail that episode. <laughs> okay, anyways. Um, the point is, it's weird what they're willing to do. It's because it's like, when you think about something like that, it's like, does that mean he was willing to, like, he had to get into character, go to a bar, flirt with a guy, you know? It's not just as simple as like I'm gonna take this guy back to a cemetery and fuck him. It's like I have to get. I am a woman. I have to like pretend to yeah. be like interested in you and be like have small talk and, and drink. So, so he's like the original catfish. <laughs> yeah. So it's weird. I mean, I don't understand it, but I guess that's what it's. That's the whole point. I mean, these villains are villains for a reason. You don't understand them. They're fucked up. Right. So, getting back to Freddy. But at least, yeah, at least Freddy does it with people's like fantasies. So yeah. It's already somebody they're visualizing. He's just like, all right, I'm going to use this against them. That's true. That's true. And he never really tries to go too far. Right. So just just enough to let they get their guard down, and then goes in for the kill. Right. So, and he. So yeah, Joe, Joey gets killed. Um, stabbed basically and then drowned i mean yeah and his mom finds him in the in, inside the waterbed right like, is, how'd you get in there yeah what's up with that joey <laughs> that's like that that woman who ended up uh being found in that water tower tank yeah like, how'd you get in there yeah how how'd you get in there what's going on here <laughs> i'd like to believe that maybe freddie was connected to that murder as well could be. So if anyone's listening from the local <laughs> Chicago law enforcement, just call me. From I've got one, some theories. Isn't that out in like LA? It's oh, that was that like Skid Row. Yeah. The Sicily Hotel yeah. or whatever. I was confusing it with that chick that got locked in the freezer and um, you know, next to Gibson's. Ah, uh, yes. Yeah. But uh you're right, yeah, it was like Skid Row. Anyways. Oh. <laughs> this probably won't make it either. <laughs> I don't know. A lot of uh, extra footage for the vault. Yes. All never right. have enough. So after Joey's death, we go to the next day, and Kristen and Alice are talking, and we kind of learn more about her dream abilities. And Well, not well, not really. It's more just she brings up that little thing that she recites, the Dream Master poem or whatever. Yeah. yeah. And Kristen's like, oh, how do you know so much about dreams? It's yeah. like, bitch, when you only you said two yeah. things. When did you become an expert? <laughs> so then after that, we go to the diner, which is cleverly titled The Crave Inn. I didn't catch it. And um, in the diner, basically all of our main characters are in this this scene here. Um, it starts out with Alice working. Uh, the jockey guy walks in and catches her eye. But her friend, uh, the fitness chick, is like, sorry, it's my shift. Yeah, your shift's over. That's my table. <laughs> um, and then Kristen and Alice's brother, Rick, come in. And that's when we find out. Well, that's when she finds out that Kincaid and, and Joey, Joey are dead. Are dead. And this is where I need to start pulling my phone out again. Because after the diner, it's a little hazy. 
So, oh, that's right. So then after the diner scene and uh, the big reveal, we're back at um, at Kristen's house, right? Where's it yeah, so. uh, I believe it's at Kristen. Kristen's house because right. her mom yes. is trying to get her, I don't know if it's breakfast or lunch. Yeah, I don't remember. Trying to give her something to eat. Yeah. She's being a bitch. Yeah, she's a terrible mom. Yeah. Because that's when Kristen's talking about how her friends just died. And her mom's like, no, you just need to eat something. Yeah. You just need some rest. Eat. That's it. That's a simple yeah. simple solution. You just, you'll get over it. Yeah. Just go just go sleep with these sleeping pills I put in your... Whatever she was drinking. Yeah. If it was water, it was very cloudy. So I don't know how you wouldn't notice it. Mm-hmm. And they are some fast acting sleeping pills because yeah, she's stumbling running up the stairs. Yeah. I don't, I don't know what she gave her. She dropped the glass too, like all over the table and broke it. Yeah, she like slammed it down. It seemed yeah. a little unnecessary. Right. You don't need to drink it, but you also don't need to break the glass. Yeah, come on, Kristen. That's just a hazard. <laughs> so then after that, um... that's with. Uh, then she goes into the dream. And she runs into Freddy. Yes, that's right. And then yes. Freddie talks about how she's like the last one, mm-hmm. something like that. Mm-hmm. And Freddie basically just chucks her into like a burning like boiler, basically, or like a furnace or something. Yes. And during the process. And winds up pulling Alice into the dream. Right. And passes her powers on to Alice as she's dying. Yeah, but she's in the furnace. She's like, you need, like, take my powers or something like that. Right. Which is kind of weird that all of a sudden they're like, oh, here's these powers. Yeah. Yeah. So in the same vein as the dog pissing, now we have another situation where it's like, okay, this is a thing. Yeah. You just, <laughs> all right. Pass powers. You have powers. Okay. Yeah. That's very bizarre, but uh, I guess we'll just we'll keep we'll go, going. We'll go with it. Yeah. <laughs> Um, and then, um, this is kind of a classic Freddy kill here, uh, the next day in class, Sheila, um, she kind of goes into her nightmare sequence. Okay. Before you get to that, you notice they kept making that, that joke where it's like, oh, I see you have the same luggage as me. Like, oh, what are you yeah. talking about? Oh, oh, the bag's under your eyes because you didn't sleep much. Right, yeah. Like, are they trying to make that a thing? They like, made that multiple times? Yeah, I think as earlier Kristen makes it to someone. Okay. And then Alice says it to the the, the smart girl. The smart the nerd girl. girl, yeah. I didn't realize they the did it twice. Yeah, they said it <laughs> at least twice. That's weird. Because then she goes to the light of that cigarette, too, and she's like, wait, I don't smoke. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I remember that, yeah. Yeah, well, why, what, what's the deal Where'd with that? Where'd you get the cigarette from then? You, <laughs> you found it? You're just like, man. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty bizarre. I don't know why they tried to make that a thing. but Yeah, um, I know that was, I think, this at least the second time they used it in the movie. Hmm, weird. I'm going to start using that. In real life, yeah. See, we have the same luggage. <laughs> the bags under your eyes. You must not sleep either. You had the same dream. She's like, no, I was up all night studying. <laughs> so then um, no. she meets her demise by getting uh, well. Freddie's like, you want to suck face? <laughs> yeah. She's like, no. <laughs> and he forces himself upon her. He does in a very Freddie way. And then. Like, I think because when you see him doing that, you kind of see her skin, like, mummifying almost. Like, he's sucking the air out of it. Mm-hmm. But then when they cut back to reality, she's like, fine. Yeah, this is, like, the only one of the few times, really. Well, maybe not, but uh, it's weird. Cause yeah, most of the time what, what happens, happens. Like, if you die in a sinister way or get killed and, you know, it, it reveals itself in the same way. They kind of did that earlier, too. We kind of just skimmed over it when Kincaid dies. Freddy stabs him in the stomach. Uh-huh. But when you see him in his bed, there's no blood. Right. So yeah. was, it, was there, like, a different rating in this one where they were like, oh, we can't show that? Mm-hmm. It does, yeah. It didn't make sense. Like, she should have looked kind of mummified. Mm-hmm. But she looked fine. And then they're like, oh, it was an asthma attack. Right, so I guess they're just implying that it, he sucked all the air out of her lungs. I would, so I would assume suffocated. Sure, but then like, why even bother showing her? Yeah, like get like yeah. Why go through the in? detail of yeah. showing her 
That is just a Mommy. treat for us. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it is weird. They don't follow their own rules that they set up early on. And then yeah, and then Freddy absorbs her soul. Yeah. Which that doesn't happen in any other movie. Mm-hmm. I don't think we see that again. But we do see in Dream Warriors, doesn't he have that? Or is that in because we did these out of order spoilers, but in is that in part five? Because this is not the first time he, he reveals that um I thing. Thought the other one was in part five. Part five, okay. So not my bad. Not not certain. We didn't see that yet. <laughs> nah. Okay. So yeah, I mean it's weird. The soul thing makes no goddamn sense. The the kill makes no sense. It does. I mean, the 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 one liner is great. The the visuals are actually cool. I do think it practically it's it's cool. But yeah, it, it, why? Yeah, the yeah. practical effects work. It's just they don't stick with it. Yeah. So then after that, um, it's kind of becoming more of like a thing in the friend group. Like, okay, yeah, maybe it is Freddy. Um, I think this is where. Ricky and Dan are starting to be more on board with the whole concept of this idea that maybe Freddy has something to do with it. Yeah, because they have that conversation where Ricky tells Dan that it's uh, it's Fred, and then he makes that joke to him, you know, if you don't die next or something like that. Right, yeah. Um, so now um, this is uh, at the point where Rick is killed well there's a few things that happen in between kind of like you said they talk and there's some more development but uh rick is having a dream sequence now and he's in a dojo and he's killed by invisible freddy <laughs> he he kicks the glove off of him yes yeah yeah like he's just fighting with himself like that had to be awkward to film awkward to shoot do you think that was like a budget thing and they're just like, oh, it's a, it's an Invisible Freddy. It's really cool. <laughs> it could have been like, oh, we don't really have a good stunt coordinator. Just, yeah. just start kicking. We'll just add some sound effects. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> do some kicks, do some punches, throw out some trash talk. We'll, we'll, we'll cut some stuff. It'll yeah, be fine. It'll, be, it'll look way cooler than yeah. it seems. <laughs> and then he also gets impaled by the glove. Yeah. Just yeah. flies through the air and. Yep. Just takes it. <laughs> and is that when then like right after that, that's led up to is that Ricky's funeral. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. she like has a daydream and like Freddie had, does stuff in her daydream. Cause she like spaces out and like Ricky comes out of the casket. Oh yeah. Yeah. And then he's like, Oh, you know, it's fine. I'm just, mm-hmm. I'm just pretending. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So when he goes back in there, he tells her, like, good night or something like that. Right. Yeah. All right, I'm going to bed. I'm like, what? <laughs> I forgot about that. That was bizarre. Yeah, that, that was like, like a daydream because she's just, sp- like, she's spaced out. Right. It's either that or she's just that tired where she's just hallucinating like that. I actually, I do appreciate that they continued, like, set that up and continued with it because it does, there's a payoff for that, I guess, later. The fact that she has these daydreams. Yeah. But um yeah, it was a weird though. Yeah. Um and then that's this is also where she's sort of starting to figure out more of the fact that she's absorbing the dreams. Like we kind of already knew it right or not the dreams, the powers. Um because we already kind of knew it as the audience, but now she's like, oh yeah, like she's starting to figure it out. Cause I believe something Something else happens where she's like she someone notices like she's getting the personality of someone or she she has some powers I don't know it's I I don't have it written down here but I know something uh, at the funeral has something to do with it Yeah is that either Dan or the fitness girl mm-hmm. So she's been acting weird acting more like so and so or whatever since they died Right Like yeah they do make a reference at at the funeral Yeah okay. about it who makes it? What the reference is? I don't remember, but it is at that, at that moment, because she's walking away and she kind of has that like, My I'm too cool for this attitude. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Um, so then ultimately that leads us to the Debbie Roach Motel kill, which is this one. I feel like a lot of um, Freddy Night- and Nightmare fans talk about a lot. It's like one of those like really classic like over the top. Yeah, sequences. Um, it's cool. Where the the visual effects on this one also were a little bizarre. Yeah, 
Like, and she's okay. First, if you look at the weights, how much is on there? Twenty pounds. Yeah. What are those two tens? Yeah, those weren't really much. Two tens in a bar. Yeah. What's the bar? Thirty five. I don't even think the bar weighs that much. No. So she's not doing. She's much. not doing a whole lot of weightlifting there. <laughs> she's just trying to get toned. All right. Not not for bulk. <laughs> right. But like he's pushing down on them because he shows up as like a spotter. Right. And then, like, it just rips her arms apart at the elbow. Mm -hmm. There's, like, no bones. There's no blood. Right. Another one where it's like, how does that work? And it is weird because it's, like, they're crossing, like, two pieces of that personality where usually it's just, like, they kind of zero in on one element. This one, it's like, oh, she's a fitness freak. And also she doesn't like bugs. Like, they kind of just, like, also shoehorn that in. And you kind of forget about it because it's like, isn't there really only like one or two references to the fact she doesn't like bugs? There's the one when they are starting to introduce them at the school, like there's a bug on her food or something. Right. And then... And I, I don't remember if there's another one. I feel like... Oh, there's um, the smart chick. Um, she makes like some device that she's going to give her because she's afraid of bugs. Yes, like that just, like sonic repellent or something like that to point at them. Yeah. Which comes into play later. That's right. Yes. Um, so yeah, that's um, it's clever. I mean, it's definitely one of the more clever kills of the film, and maybe in the series, it's debatable. Yeah. But is that when he has like that Welcome to the Roach Motel or something? Yeah. So um, then after that, um, we have. Oh yeah, this is where they're kind of having that repeating dream sequence, Alice and Dan. Yes. Because when that first happened, I was like, did I, did I hit something? Right. Did I rewind this? <laughs> I've seen this. Yeah. Um, so, that's yeah, it's a little trippy. And um, eventually, she, she always thinks she sees Freddy in the middle of the road while they're driving. And they, she wants to, like, ram into him because this is part of Debbie's aggress- aggressive side, I guess. Right. That's the power, part of her power. And she ends up hitting a tree and it causes... This is so fucking, like, crazy because this all happens so fast. And it almost seems to me it's like they just needed an excuse to get Dan away somehow. And yeah. so, yeah, I don't know. So he hits, they hit a tree. He needs to be rushed to the hospital. So it kind of, like, it's weird. Like, we go from this trippy dream sequence to, like, all right, now we're going to take a break. And now we're back to the dream sequence. Like, we should have just been in the final showdown, sorry. And they're, like, when they're in that ambulance, too... And the guy's trying to, like, put him out because of his pain, and mm-hmm. she's stopping him, and all of a sudden she's like, oh, uh, he's, he's allergic. <laughs> yeah. Oh, should have said that sooner. Okay, I yeah. won't do this. No, it's okay. Yeah. 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 Well, sorry, yeah. But before that, she's, like, psychotic. Yeah. No, 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 please. He's got to stay awake. Oh, he's allergic to that. Okay. <laughs> Did you say so? Yeah. Yeah. That's... Not going to trust anything you're saying. <laughs> it's, it's the 80s. <laughs> um... Yeah, weird sequence. Um, and when Dan is finally admitted to the hospital and, and, and uh, ready to be put into surgery, that's when Alice goes back home to prepare for the actual ultimate battle. Which the, the hospital seems weird, too. Like, she runs up to the doctor and goes, when's he going in for surgery? And he's like, oh, 15 minutes. <laughs> yeah, right? Just tells her. <laughs> and then she takes her dad's keys. Uh-huh. I'm assuming that's her dad. Yeah. And just takes his car. Right. Just, just give, I, I need your keys. And then he just leaves him there. Uh-huh. I know it's it's like so it's like just so rushed and Yeah, she had just fallen asleep at the wheel and hit a tree and he's like, Yeah, here are my keys. Mm-hmm. See? It, it makes sense. Yeah. The Why 80s, not? 80s. <laughs> You're fine to drive now that <laughs> that accident like jarred you awake. You're good. Yeah. <laughs> Um, yeah, so then this kind of just leads us up to the final showdown, which is... Her getting ready for the final showdown is, like, using a little bit of everybody's stuff. Mm-hmm. I don't know if you noticed that. Like, she puts on, like, the gray tank top. Right. That the athletic girl was killed in. Right. And then she, like, wraps her hands like her brother did. Right. They use the same music, too. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that was cool. I mean, you know, for being... Pulls all the pictures down, Oh yeah, yeah. 
And also too, you know, I'll say this about their like their group of friends. Um, as as bad and as weird as the movie is, sometimes you do get a sense from most of these people interacting with each other that like they are friends and they go back. Especially the scene where they're what she's watch. Alice is watching the home videos after Kristen dies, and it's Kristen and. Um, her brother, yeah, Ricky, and they're all like on the ground, just hanging out. Like I got a sense from that video that they were real friends. Like that was really well acted, I thought, in that part, specifically that part. Yeah, like they all knew each other beforehand. Yeah, it's kind of an interesting. They do try to set up that interesting dynamic. Like you've got the jock, mm-hmm. and then the really smart girl, and then that one who's just that the tough one. Like it's an interesting mix of kids. It's not like just one group like it's a little bit of everything yeah it is yeah kind of like you know everyone's different but you know treat everyone the same Mm -hmm. (laughs) yeah yeah i mean it's just unfortunate they did they didn't get to spend enough time i feel like on some of them like dan really doesn't get a lot of time at all yeah like it's kind of just like oh yeah here's just dan this jockey guy that everyone is in love with yeah that's about it yeah and all of a sudden he's gonna help save the day at the end I mean, kind of. Kind of help. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, we get into this, the final showdown, like, after the montage. And um, as far as ending sequences go of the Nightmare series, it's... And Dan, Dan dies. Yeah. How, how does he go? No, Dan doesn't die, does he? I don't remember. I thought they got to, they walk away together at the end. Yes. He he leaves the dream, though, because he gets woken up from the surgery. Right. Because it's over. Because he is... Freddy shows up as the doctor mm-hmm. and then does something to Dan. And Dan starts bleeding on the operating table. So you see him bleeding. Oh, yeah. Because then the doctors make a comment and they... Like, bring him back. They're like, oh, we almost lost you. Oh, we yeah. Got you. So right. him getting hit by Freddy... Bleeds in the real world. Right, right, yeah. But the other guy, nothing. Logical. Yeah. Well, he's in a doctor's office. It's fine. Right. <laughs> yeah. Um. Forgot about that. Yeah. That's weird. Even going back to uh, Joey's death, you see Freddy, like, impale him, mm-hmm. and the water turns to blood. Yeah. But then when his mom finds him, yeah. the water's clear. It's clear, yeah. Very inconsistent, yeah. but I would expect nothing less from this. Shot, shot it out of order. <laughs> Want to know what that's like? <laughs> yeah, no idea what that's like. <laughs> um, yeah, so then, um, well, once Dan exits the dream from being able to help because he's woken up from surgery, Alice, this is again, like we talked about, very confusing sequences, stupidly written things. It's all of a sudden just decided that a mirror is what is. Freddy's weakness now. Yeah, like even before when they're fighting and they're in the, the church, mm-hmm. like she is kicking him in the face repeatedly and he's laughing at her. Right. And then he takes a swipe at her. She ducks it. And then the next time she kicks him, all of a sudden she's hurting him. Yeah. So he's fine until he misses and then now all of a sudden everything hurts him. Yeah. It's like, it's like how? You just got kicked in the face 10 times. You're fine. You miss a swing. You get hit again. Now you're hurt. I guess she just had to make his energy meter go yeah. down a little bit. <laughs> it's like King Hippo from Mike Tyson's punch out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. So based on her remembering of this like dream master recited poem, um, she has a mirror. And- but I feel like that's not the first time Freddy's looked in a mirror. It can't be. I'd have to rewatch them, be. but there's got to be times where he's like looked at himself in a mirror. Fixed his hat. Right. Made a, like a snide comment. Or, there's got to be another time where he's seen his own reflection. I agree. I, I can't believe that there hasn't been a moment where that has happened. Throughout four movies, right. he's never seen, looked in a mirror once. There's uh, never been a mirror in any scene. If I'm feeling ambitious, I will do some fact checking and I'll throw in a clip or an, a photo right now if, if he ever did that yeah. before. Okay. <laughs> so we found out. Um, or, or even in the future, in any of the other movies. Right. We should keep note of that, yeah. Um, but yeah, so that's uh, ultimately what um, does him in and releases the souls from him. Oh, that's kind of cool, though, actually. This is a cool sequence because 
the souls are actually reaching out now and trying to escape from his body. And uh, that is cool. That looks cool. Yeah, and they're like pinning him down. Yeah. Like they're grabbing onto the the altar and stuff as he's trying to move. They're like stopping him. Yeah. But yeah, that's a pretty cool effect. Definitely, yeah. Um, and then eventually, uh, yeah, he just bursts apart and the souls go back and up they, to heaven, I guess. <laughs> I don't yeah, know. Where, wherever they're going. They're going. Gotta assume most of them are going up. Maybe a couple went down. <laughs> you never know. I mean, there were a few bad apples maybe in that yeah. bunch. But, uh, yeah, so Freddy is gone. Maybe. So we're led to believe. Uh, so Alice uh, exits the church and don't really know how much time passes, but uh, we find out uh, that Dan and Alice are together and um, they're taking a nice, lovely stroll by a fountain and... Dan is like, hey, make a wish in the fountain. So Alice. And she's like, yeah, you don't believe in that. Right. Yeah. But he does. Yeah. And he flips a coin and you see, what, Freddy's reflection in the water? Yeah. So is that her wish? (laughs) Was her wish that Freddy comes back? But why? Why would that be? Because he's like, oh, make a wish. And then this shows it. Mm -hmm. And then it's like, what would you wish for? She's like, well, I can't tell you. Otherwise, it won't come true. Right. Plot holes. Yeah, just plot holes. Plot, plot <laughs> holes everywhere. <laughs> it's like the roads. <laughs> so, yeah, that pretty much takes us to the end of part four. Um, hell yeah moments. Uh, even though it was led up to by stupid moments. Yeah. Like the fire peeing dog. Yeah. The sequence of Freddy coming back. Yeah. Like the way they shot that. And they had to have melted something. We'd have to watch that documentary. And then just did it in reverse. Mm -hmm. Because like the way the texture comes back and the eye gets the liquid back in it. Yeah. For me, it'd probably be, that'd be my hell yeah moment of the film. That was a really cool sequence. Yeah. Maybe the souls. Oh, yeah. The way they were coming out grabbing. Yeah. Yeah, that was cool. Um, I'll give it up to the, uh, I'll go to the Roach Motel for mine. Thought that. That was just one of those Freddy kills. It's like if someone is new to the franchise and they're like, what's this Freddy guy all about? You show them that kill and it's like, yeah, okay. So I'm going to go with that one. Um, What about his one-liner? During that scene? No, of uh, Joey's death. Oh, yeah, yeah, the the wet dream. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, how's that that for a wet dream? How's that for a hell yeah moment? That's a good hell yeah moment. Yeah, his his witty (laughs) one-liners are what make the movies. And they they just get more outrageous. Yeah, definitely. And I would say in this movie particularly is when they really kind of started to realize that, like, all right, people are here to see Freddy. Yeah. So... The outrageous kills, the witty one-liners. That's what we're here for. Yeah. What's he going to do next? Right, yeah. So uh, as far as rating goes, um, I think I'm going to give this movie... (laughs) I don't have any good objects. Yeah, I was trying to think what the best one would be. (laughs) Um, Um, I'll go with two Roach Motels. Okay. (laughs) It's like he does have his good... Couple good kills, like the Roach Motel one, mm-hmm. the waterbed, and he's got his one liners. But overall, the story had so many, so many plot holes, and it just a jumbled mess. Yeah. So that's I'll go with the two. That's okay. being I feel like a little generous. Okay. I think I'll also go with two sleeping pills out of five. <laughs> Um, I do think I agree with a lot of what you said. It's it's a lot of a mess at times. Um, you can obviously tell that they were trying to make this movie without a director at first, and there's probably a without a script too. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> sure seems that way. <laughs> and um, yeah, I don't know. I just a lot of it was lost on me at times and it's just like okay but at certain points there was also things that made you cheer and go like yeah that's why we love this franchise so um it's not like one that's so bad i will skip it if i'm ever doing like marathons but um certainly of all the four that we've watched so far it's on the bottom yeah this one's not necessarily a skip but this might be one of those where it's like you want a snack or you have to take a leak you might be like, nah, I don't need to pause it. 
Right. It's, it's fine. <laughs> I can go grab that load of laundry quick so I can fold it. Right, right. So, yeah. I mean, I don't exactly know what to expect for part five, but I'm very excited. And um, I really hope you'll uh, join us next time for that one. Yeah. Can't, can't get any worse than this. No. <laughs> Thanks, Justin. <laughs>